want to talk to you a little bit about um, our national values over our national interest and trying to make sense of the world that we are now in and know where do we turn, where, where do we go from here. Tonight at 5 o'clock on the Blaze TV, I'm going to do a, I think, a pretty important monologue on the, the history of of uh, of the last 15 years and how we got here. And unless you know the facts of how we got here, you'll never be able to find the truth on where we go from here. My job, as I see it, is I search for truth. That's different than searching for facts. The facts have to be put into place first that's why we built the blaze we built the blaze as a place that can gather the facts what are the facts of what is going on that's different than truth if you build the truth on facts you're going to be okay if you build the truths uh, if you build the uh, uh your truth on uh you know wishes and hopes and puppy dogs you're, you don't have truth. You may celebrate it as your truth, but it's not the truth. And it's not going to lead any place real. So we have to find the facts. This is why I struggled this weekend on, on whether or not, when, when do I start having the conversation with my children? At what age do you start showing them a seven-year-old holding a human head? That is one of the facts that you will find on the blaze today. Not my question, not my search of truth, but the fact that happened this weekend. They are involving children now in the beheadings. They are involving children in Iraq on killing and burying people alive. When do we tell our kids this? They're telling their kids now. We don't want our kids to feel bad. And are we doing more damage to them? This fall, because of Common Core, the facts of American history are changing. U.S. history is going to take a very radical turn. The U.S. history classes, the AP classes, are um, are changing. Um, the founding fathers have been deleted. Uh, the pilgrims have been deleted. John Winthrop, James Madison, Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin, de Tocqueville, Lincoln, have all been deleted. What did they add? The Europeans' belief in white superiority. Instead of establishing a city upon the hill, as generations of students have been taught, uh, the next generation is going to be told that those who came here were bigots who, and I'm quoting, were beholden to a rigid ra uh, racial hierarchy. End quote. Manifest Destiny was built on a belief in white racial superiority and a sense of Americans' cultural superiority we're changing the facts so we can change the truth here are the facts the facts are we are no longer engaged in radicalized Islam we're no longer engaged with those people we are now engaged with psychotic Islam period it is nothing short of deeply held psychotic beliefs that have you take your children to the street and hold up the decapitated heads of your enemies. That is psychotic. Period. Where do we go from here? As I will explain in my monologue tonight at 5 o'clock, which is a don't-miss monologue, I don't know. I am not a guy who can tell you about the, the close-up details. I never have been. I'm a guy who can tell you what it looks like over the horizon. I'm a guy who can tell you what the big picture looks like. I can't tell you the little details. I don't know. It's not my gift. It's not my. It's not anything having to do with me. We all have different gifts. I will tell you that throughout the course of my life in the last 10 years, I have been able to tell you, here are some exits. You have to get off this exit now. We have to change course and direction now. Because when we get up on top of it, it will be too late. 
what are we really looking at? We are looking at global war, and anyone who tells you differently is lying to you. Look at the facts. Whose interests are being served now by getting the United States of America into war? Well, our economic interests, I will be surprised if we don't told that, our economic interests, and our economic interests, because the economy is too fragile. Why is it too fragile? Because of the banking interests. And if we have a hit on oil, well, then we're not going to be able to handle it. And so our economic interests are at stake. But so are the interests of the, of the uh, state of Saudi Arabia. That's why we've been for the Muslim Brotherhood. That's why we're involved. Saudi Arabia. Now, on the other side of what's really happening is Iran. You have the Sunnis and the Shias. One side is Saudi Arabia, the other side is Iran. Who's aligned themselves with Iran? Russia. We're being dragged into a global war. The United States of America and Saudi Arabia and any other ally that we could cobble together at this point, and Iran, Syria, Russia, and anyone else they can cobble together. I would like to just point out, Something else was completed this weekend, got very little attention, and that is they have finished the transaction between Russia and China. A new alliance. The de-dollarization of China and Russia is now official. Remember, China will never do this because China needs us. China needs the dollar. It's the global currency. China has already made a deal in the Middle East. They no longer have to worry about buying their gold or their uh, oil with dollars. Wait a minute, that can't happen. That can't happen. It's, it's all traded in dollars. Not anymore. Not for China. Oh, China doesn't need us, I guess. China just finished the de-dollarization with Russia. So what, is that, what does that tell you? Whose side, which one does China say its national interests will be best served standing next to? The United States of America or Russia? My guess is China is going to stay out of this until the very end. But we are being dragged into a global war. We must not participate. I honestly don't know what to do, because this is what I've been warning against, well, for four years, five, how long, Stu, on just the caliphate? I mean, you went a long time into detail when we were at Headline News, I remember. I mean, you, you focus on it a lot. So I don't know if you rem I, I remember that, which was 2006. Could have been earlier. <laughs> so we are there now. And if you remember when I was saying this then in 2006, I was talking principally about Iran and saying you cannot let them get into a position to where they are strong enough to cobble together a caliphate strong enough to be able to have or be on the edge of nuclear weapons. You can't let it happen. The time is now to squeeze them. The time is over to squeeze them. We don't have the power to squeeze them. If we get into a global war now, we will lose everything. Our values say the good guys can't win. I mean, the good guys have to win. The bad guys can't win. That's not, those aren't our values. We have to stand up for those who are defenseless. Yes. But there are other ways of doing it other than guns. You have to look at a long-term strategy. We cannot be focused on our national interest of today. That's why we're in this situation. Why do we have 17 or 20 trillion dollars in debt? Because we want it now. We want it now. Now I want it. Now, now, now. And we never worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will never come. We have to start looking at tomorrow and not just now. Look in the eyes of your children. The decisions that we make today will mean their freedom or slavery. What is in your personal interest? For me, it is the freedom of my children and my grandchildren. I will take any burden. I will pay any price. Tonight at 5, I will tell you, I'm going to tell you now, but I will explain it in detail. I don't have an answer for you on this one. Because the answer that I have is a warning for the future. We play catch-up. 
the world continues to play catch up because they will not look at the facts. I'm not some prophet. If you look, however, at my record, you would think that I am. I'm not. I look at the facts and then I search for truth. The one gift that I do have is to see over the horizon. You will notice, while everyone else is freaking out about whatever it is today, I am warning you about what is coming tomorrow. I ask this audience, I beg this audience to do the hard thing, to do not freak out about what is happening today. Heed my warning of what is coming tomorrow and correct that because this is the last hurdle. If we face this, if we don't listen to this last warning, if this, if this exit is missed, we are done. So please, please heed the warning of what comes.